Hello students, welcome to the new chapter that is of the electric hybrid and fuel cell vehicle. This is the chapter number 4 that is for the fuel cell technology according to our syllabus. So, we have seen about the electric vehicle, we have seen about the hybrid drive trains and we have also seen about the energy storages and in the energy storage chapter we saw about the batteries and we also saw that batteries are not sufficient to provide the required power alone in the required time or in required vehicle. So with the batteries we have to hybridize another energy source. That energy source we can use as a uh, fuel cell, ultra capacitor, high speed flywheels etc etc. So we have seen about the ultra capacitor and high speed flywheels in the chapter of energy storage. In this we will learn about the fuel cell technology that can be used as the fuel cell electric vehicle with the combination of our batteries and fuel cell, how that fuel cell work, how the fuel cell generates the electricity that will be seen in this chapter. So before going further into the fuel cell, let's first see how the fuel cell is working and how the fuel cell is supplying the energy that is required for vehicle running. So here is the simplest diagram for the fuel cell for the understanding of us. So in this chemical diagram or in this circuit you can see that there is same as the battery diagram right. In the battery we also use anode and cathode. In the fuel cell as well again we use anode cathode same as the battery. At the time of the at the side of the anode the hydrogen is supplied and at the side of the cathode the oxygen is supplied. So H2 gas and O2 gas is generally supplied. Right, the air is not supplied, the O2 is supplied, the oxygen has to be supplied. So in that case oxygen has to be removed from the air and that pure oxygen has to be supplied. Also in case of the hydrogen, hydrogen needs to be supplied mostly in the case of the compressed gas. Right, so hydrogen will be supplied as the compressed gas and it will have to be stored either as the compressed gas or either we can store it as an alternate method that we are going to learn in the last part of this chapter. First let's understand how the procedure works. So when the hydrogen comes from the cathode side, it gives us the value and it gives us the hydrogen ions that is H plus ion and the electron gets disintegrated from it. Now we have placed electrolyte in between two electrodes that is anode and cathode. That electrodes, that electrolyte will only allow the hydrogen ions to transfer from cathode to anode. Right. So this is how the hydrogen ions will be transferred from the negative to positive electrode. But that electrolyte will not allow the electrons to flow from that line. So electrons will flow from the electric line that we have connected as an output. So when that electrons will flow from the negative to positive ion via an electric line, the current will be generated. So our positive electron will get hydrogen ions from the electrolyte and electrons via our electric line. So this is how the oxygen that has been supplied towards the positive electrode will combine with the hydrogen positive ions with the help of the electrons that are coming from the current line and it will create an H2O as a byproduct. So H2O which is a water, so water is being generated as the byproduct of the fuel cell, right. The byproduct of our fossil fuels was CO2, hydrocarbons, right. These are some uh, not required gases or harmful gases for the atmosphere but here in the case of the fuel cell, the byproducts that is being generated is an H2O, right? So which is very uh, easy and which can be easily removed from the fuel cell exhaust. So this is simply how this fuel cell is working. You can see in the below that three uh, equations are given first for the anode, that is for the negative electrode, that is H2 is disintegrated into hydrogen ions and electrons 
that is being transferred, hydrogen ions will be transferred by electrolyte and our electrons will be transferred by our current line. Second is for the cathode, that is two electrons which is coming from the current, two hydrogen ions coming from the electrolyte and the oxygen that we are supplying combines itself and gives us the water. So overall equations can be written as the H2 plus half O2 gives us the one mole of our H2O. So this is simply how the process work. It is opposite of the electrolysis process in which we are disintegrating hydrogen but in this fuel cell what we are doing is we are again combining the hydrogen and oxygen and getting the water as a byproduct. During that process what we are getting is that we are getting the current generation and that current is used for our electric supply. So that fuel cell is not storing the energy, it is just, just generating the energy whenever we are requiring. In the batteries what was happening, it was stored in the chemical storage of the battery and then whenever required it supplies. But in the case of the fuel cell, the electricity will be generated whenever we will supply the hydrogen and it will be uh, supplied for the power electric motor when our requirement arises. Right. So, fuel cell will not store the energy, it will only generate the energy and it will supply whenever it is required. Right. So, this is simply how the fuel cell works. Let's see one video on which we will betterly understand how the fuel cell is actually working. So, in the case of the fuel cell electric vehicle, you can see right now is that the components given is the combination of the fuel cell plus battery vehicle in which the hydrogen is stored in this hydrogen tank. This is simply how the hydrogen fuel cell works. It commonly works same as the battery. Right. The chemical reactions that are happening are same as battery. So fuel cell works mostly same as the battery was working. So in this fuel cell you can see the inlet and outlet depending on the different types. Here is the com comparison between the hydrogen fuel cell and the combustion engine. So in case of hydrogen fuel cell you can see the ions that are being transferred from one part to another part. The middle part is the electron membranes that you can see right now. The negative electrode is anode, positive is the cathode one. So that electrodes are different materials according to the required. So from the anode we are supplying the H2 hydrogen gas. That hydrogen gas is disintegrated because of the electrolyte reaction. It gives us the positive hydrogen ions that can be transferred by our electrolyte membranes. The negative ions cannot be transferred via membranes, so it will be transferred via our electric supply that will have been connected. Right? You can see here the load is being connected, which supplies the electron from anode to cathode, and in which we are getting the electricity. Here you can see the O2 is supplied from the right side, that is cathode, and that O2 gets combined with our hydrogen ions and electrons and gives us the H2 as the byproduct of the fuel cell. So this is simply how the fuel cell works in the basic method. There are different types of fuel cell in, in which there are different types of electrodes we have used but this is the basic procedure for the fuel cell for the electricity generation. So this was the basic working of the fuel cell. These are the basic fuel cell characteristics that needs to be fulfilled whenever we are using the fuel cell or we are going to use the fuel cell in the vehicle. This is the basic equation which gives us the energy which will be liberated by the fuel cell that is NFE. N is the number of electrons which is produced by the anode reaction. F is the Faraday's constant which the value of it will be constant and E is the reversible potential of the fuel cell, the potentiality of the reversibility of the procedure in the fuel cell. The graph which is shown gives you the current density and the cell potential. Right. In that you can see the theoretical line that is a dotted line which theoretically shows that the value of the voltage of fuel cell of the one cell is around 1.2 volt. But in the actual process, in the practical value, 
the voltage varies around 0.5 to 0.7 voltage and that is the voltage which is given by one fuel cell that we are going to use in the vehicle. Right. So in this video we saw about how the fuel cell is actually working and what are the characteristics required from the fuel cell for the vehicle operation. In the next video we will see about the different type of the fuel cells that can be used for the vehicle. Until then, thank you so much.